So two things today. We're going to talk more about the midterm exam. If you didn't catch last class, we had a whole extravaganza of a review for it. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty much underway. Our review, however, we have a little PowerPoint to look at here. And after that, the thing I'm really looking forward to is hearing your submissions, your radio feature scripts. So because it's a mandatory day, do make sure you get your name down on the roll for having been here, midterm review. So we talked about this last class, um, 50 questions. It's true or false or multiple choice. The chapters covered are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and there were selections from chapter 10 because we didn't go all the way through chapter 10. Uh, and you should practice using the web quizzes, which are on every week on Canvas. So that's what it looks like. So go through the modules and look for the web quizzes so that you can practice on them, OK? Uh, so um, last class, we went through all the web quizzes. Answered all the questions, you can do the same. Um, today is just on chapter 10, which, uh, as I said, we only went part way through, and it was about broadcast, writing for broadcast. Why we're paying special attention to this. Uh, so just some uh, key factoids from the, uh, uh, the chapters to help you answer the questions. KISS is the abbreviation in the book for Keep It Simple Students. So that's uh, the commandment when writing for broadcasting. Um, concise writing sticks to basic sentence structure, noun plus verb. If, for example, Jane writes, and or noun, verb, and object, Jane writes the script. So uh, again, it's recommended that you build your phrases out of those from that core of uh, noun, verb, and object just to keep things simple. Look for opportunities to use the present tense, but don't make it sound ridiculous. That means if something clearly happened in the past, you can't just say it in the present tense. No one will understand you. It's better if things really happened in the past, say them in the past tense. But if you can find an angle on the story which is current, which allows you to say things in the present tense, go ahead and use that. In fact, you should be revising your writing in order to take advantage of that. Example, firefighters continue to battle a blaze that yesterday claimed 10 lives and has already caused millions of dollars of damage. So you can pick it up in the indefinite now before retreating to past tense to talk about the factual before and try to keep tweaking things that way. You know, uh, Security guards are recovering after being shot in a holdup yesterday. Yeah? Um, so what about like if you're working with an actuality and uh, the person you're it's like, oh, tonight we have this, tonight this. So is that, would you just go in and change that with editing or? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, uh, if you can avoid the confusion that the, their time, time stamping would do, yeah. Otherwise, you have to kind of account for it. You know? yeah, okay. uh, earlier today, we talked to uh, the organizer you know, who was looking forward to, and then tonight we're going to do this yeah. for that. You know? All right. Yeah, you have, you have to write, write, write in a way that will explain it, just, just so it doesn't pop out and shock people. OK, cool. If, uh, if you've got something happening in chronological order, that's great, because people understand stuff better in chronological order. You have to jump around a lot. It gets confusing. But you know, you'll often, last, last semester, we were analyzing a Bay Bridge shutdown story. And uh, you, could, you could see that you know, they started it off uh, with a shot of the Bay Bridge, and there's nothing going on it because it's in the present tense. And then they very clearly like, said, but earlier today, and then they led us through a completely chronological sequence of events that, um, that is the easiest way to hang a story um, that people can understand, chronological. The lead of a broadcast story is like a newspaper headline. It has to grab your attention. So, that doesn't mean that we write a lead as though it was, you know, um, two cars crash on, on Highway 80 or something. It's like 
No, you'd say two cars crashed on Highway 80, or they're still picking up the pieces from the two cars that crashed earlier today on Highway 80. So, you know, you'll definitely write it conversationally, but its function as a lead is rather like a headline to grab your attention and to let you know kind of what, what is this story about and to get your attention. Right, oh, broadcast writers use accurate approximations of numbers. So, in other words, they won't uh, go, uh, you know, 1,235,673. Uh, you know, they'll probably just go 1.2 million. So the, it's an approximation, but it's accurate. It's not just millions of, you know. So um, be accurate, but uh, bear in mind, you know, they can't take too much detail. Uh, we have to write simply because audiences hear us only once. True. They can't back up and reread us as they do in print. And plus, they may not even be paying very close attention when they hear us the first time because they're off doing something else or driving and watching out for something. So. That's why we're trying to keep it simple. Broadcast scripts are typed in double space so that they're easier for people to read when the you know, makers see them for the first time. Uh, also to help them, uh, difficult names, place names, people names, or hard to pronounce uh, uh, words are written out. Those are called pronouncers when they are you know, basically written out whatever. Cashew, if, for instance, someone didn't know how to spell cashew. So that would be a pronouncer. Broadcast stories often loop back around to the incident with which they started in a circular structure, right? So uh, often we start with some detail with some guy who's lost all his money at the casino or something. And then we go out and talk about the issue of gambling addiction and see some other people. And then we come back to him, and he's successfully entered into some kind of program to deal with his gambling addiction. So then we come full circle back to the incident with which we started. <clears throat> it's not really an incident, it's a person, but same sort of principle that the circularity of the broadcast structure. Another name for a reporter's lockout is the close of a story. So remember the lockout is what we said that the reporter does at the end of a story. They say, this was Cecil Cecil for KCSF. You could also call that the close. If a story contains a sound bite, it's called a rap. A story that's read by the anchor and contains no sound bites, what's that called? Reader. It's a reader, that's right. That's a reader. So, <clears throat> sound bites are also called actualities. To have your anchor say the acronym for our Board of Governors, you would write B-O-G, okay? So if you want them to read out the letters B-O-G, separate it with hyphens, right? And if they're gonna say the CIA, they'll just write CIA. Another name for soundbite is actuality. Oh gosh, I just said that. Okay. And that's the end of the slideshow, awesome. So as I said, this combined with uh, doing the web quizzes for the uh, various uh, chapters, right? Those would be. Was your interpretation useful. of the uh, circular structure the diamond? Yeah, but I didn't want to bring it up because I don't want to confuse people at this late date. But yes, I prefer the diamond. But in the textbook, they say circles. So. Let's follow the textbook, because you guys are certainly reading and studying out of that. Okie doke. So, um, yes, midterm is here. Midterm review. Up there, a lot of the stuff we were just talking about. So chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and selections from 10. Practice those quizzes. They're helpful. Good. Questions about the midterm? All right, so uh, it'll be open online. Um, how many people think they'll come in to write it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I'll print out like 10 or something. Are you going to do it over there or here? Um, if I can do it here, I would like to. Uh, OK, because we'll we're, we're way late in terms of getting it to them, right? Yeah, we'll do it here. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Well, 
Let's, uh... Nansen. That's my homie. Sorry? <laughs> That's my boat homie, Fridge Off Nansen. The Google Doodle today. Oh, really? really? Where to? What is it? Um, Fridge Off Nansen was an explorer from Norway, and he was like one of the only explorers who wasn't a jerk to native people. <laughs> jerk, a major understatement. Interesting. Okay. Let's see, anybody else here? That's, is anyone kind of moderating chat? I know, I know we're going to want to, okay. Uh, so I'm throwing this open. Who would like to read their, uh, okay, Nika would like to read his, uh, his feature script. Afternoon. And Nick, okay. Let's get you. Okay, here we go. One sec. Kind of reactor, Jenny. Of course. Okay, one sec here. Nika, Nick, Jenny. JP. Okay, we'll just take four for now. Anybody online? We'll be we'll be paying attention online as well. Hang on a sec. We'll get to you. We, we got time. And uh, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, if you just put it in, I may not have it. Uh, here we go. Boom. Whoops. The green button. There we go. Okay. Cool. Power start with me. Uh, yeah, I think we said so, right? And then it's Nick. Oh, okay, I thought you asked me to read other people's stories, but. Oh no, you want to start yours? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm good to start with mine. Okay, yeah, I, I think everyone can read their own, and, but if if, uh, if they don't, you can read them too. All right. With more and more budget cuts over the years, the San Francisco Public Library has had to rely more and more on outside sources of income that would seem counterproductive to a library. The 53rd annual book sale this weekend is one of the biggest yet. Nika Bucko spoke with a few of the librarians and volunteers to get the story for KCSF. Shh, shh, shh. That sounds. We have raised over $175,000 so far this sale. It's truly amazing what this community of book lovers does for us. That's, that's how she talked. <laughs> this is Maria. She's a librarian and has worked the sale for three years now and only watched it get bigger. This location is much better than what we've had in the past. We're having so many people of all ages come in from all over and I'm glad we can fit them all. <laughs> she speaks of the building we're currently standing in, in Fort Mason. A massive warehouse that stretches on for hundreds of meters and is currently filled with hundreds of people and thousands upon thousands of books. They are not recent bestsellers, I found many over 40 years old, <laughs> but they were all a single dollar that day. Oh, all these books are donated. We don't sell library books. In fact, this is as many as we've ever had, I've been told. The volunteers here are a collection of mostly teenage and retired women, and many of them have been doing this for several years. Oh, and volunteering here is so worth it. They give us free books in the end. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, with more and more funds being diverted from our libraries, it's good to know that we can count on volunteers in the general community to support this vital institution. This is Nyka Bako for KCSF, signing off. All right. <laughs> yes, formatting looked great. We have comments for comment, uh, for content, sorry. I like your first person perspective. It's kind of like, you said, I found many that are 40 years old. And then you said, like, we, the reporter said it. Mm -hmm. That's so nice. It's kind of personal. Gotcha. Very conversational that way, too. Yeah? Does the first paragraph repeat the phrase over and over or more and more? More and more, like that? yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that plays better on the page than it does spoken because it just yeah. sounds like you're repeating yourself. Yeah. Sure. I don't think it was sorry. purposeful, right? No, that's kind of just how I speak. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you could find something else that that would not repeat itself. I guess the other, the only other note that I had on that was uh, uh, the biggest yet, which you know it could be uh, specified a little better, okay. perhaps. Uh, as far as that, and then you just left out one hundred seventy-five thousand mm. uh, dollars, and uh, this should be one seven five. 
and then T H O U S A N D. Where is it? <clears throat> it's in there. It's in the first actuality. Yeah, and anyhow, well, I take that back, you know, because actualities, um, well. She didn't say dollars, and now that I remember, I can really? And she just said 175,000. Gotcha. So. Okay. Maybe you so could preface the quote we should write out. the dollar count. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. Something like that. Yes. Be We've raised over 175,000. I, I think we'd understand it. Can you get the dollars in parentheses? The dollar sign? Well, no, you can't because, I mean, this is, this is a, you're going to play back an actuality on the radio. You That's can't add, it, add in a, you can't add in, I mean, you could, you could, <laughs> if, We've raised over $175, that is. So far, this sale is truly amazing, you know. Uh, but, or you could just paraphrase off the top of it, you know. Maria's happy. They've raised over $175,000 this sale. It's truly amazing what this community of book lovers does for us, you know. So you could, you could just do it that way. It's, you're still using most of the actuality, and then you just get yourself out of that problem. Maybe. Paraphrasing is everyone's friend. Other uh, other other comments for Nika? Really good sound bites. Yes. Sorry, not sound bites. Nat sound. Oh. Good nat sound. Nat sounds. Yes, you imagined them rather well. Turn the best. All right. An auditory imagination, helpful for radio. Other comments? Cool. Well, who would like to go next? I will. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I have every, I have a list here of courageous souls. All right. Winston. Just the um, disclaimer, I forgot to uh, time the actualities. OK. So they're just actualities. I did, too. We won't hold it against you. You. Uh, at least not in public. Uh, <laughs> Or should I be looking here? Uh, out. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is the way, right? Let's just do it this way. And blow it up as big as... Did you want to read it yourself, Nick? Yeah, I'll read it myself. All right, awesome. Okay. Um, this is U62 News. Up next, a story on local independent wrestler... On a local independent wrestler's homecoming to Jefferson High School, Will Cuevas. Let's get... Sorry, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's get ready to rumble! And that sound, crowd noise, and music turned down for what? Jefferson High School in Daly City hosted all pro wrestling's Jim Morris fundraising show with big headliners and a big world title match. But the prodigal son returns. And that sound, the floor squeaking and chairs moving and background talking. Uh, actually, one, it felt good ever since I graduated from here. I've dreamt of coming back here and wrestling. It's a dream come true to be back. Will Cuevas, NorCal pro wrestler, starting his career in all pro wrestling in the early 2000s before joining the Marines in 2004, then returning to the ring, traveling the world over, made his homecoming to Jefferson High School, diving off the gym balcony to his opponent that night, Sin, his manager Cesar Black, and tag team partner Papa Esco. Um, the same balcony I jumped off tonight, I jumped off when I was in high school and ran to the middle of the gym and did my Shawn Michaels pose during a big <laughs> rally at high school. And that sound talking in the background, Will wowing the crowd like his hero. I didn't think about anything, I just did it. For this fundraising event, for the school. Just an adrenaline rush to come through the crowd as soon as they announced Jefferson High School alumni. Just felt the crowd, it was amazing. Will has had a big 2017 wrestling international superstars like Pentagon Jr. and Blue Demon Jr. from Mexico, along with Zack Sabre Jr. from the UK, defeating his teacher and mentor, Iron Mike Modest, trying out for WWE's developmental roster, NXT, appearing on WWE TV twice, and wrestling at the Cow Palace with APW in May, bringing a dream full circle. And that sound of the ring being disassembled. The crowd was amazing. They were just on fire the entire night, and I thank everyone for their support. This has been Nick Winston from U62 Radio. All right. So it seems like you were writing it to maximize the excitement. Yes? Um, it's, yes. It's, it's reminding me a little bit of Jack Kerouac, uh, who was, you know, uh, San Francisco beat writer from way back who wrote without punctuation. 
in order to make it seem like one long stream. Uh, so, so my only difficulty here is there's lots of, there's lots of uh, sentence fragments st strung together. And you should use the period more often and then go back and look at those sentences and just make sure that, that, uh, you know, that you're going subject, verb, object. You know, subject, verb, object. Uh, by that, I mean, uh, maybe here would be an example. Uh, Will has had a big 2017 wrestling international superstars like Pentagon Jr. and Blue Demon Jr. from Mexico, along with Zack Sabre Jr. from the UK, defeating his teacher and mentor, Iron Mike Modest, trying out for... So I, what you're trying to say, he's had a big year, a big 2017, right? He has, you know, joined up with international wrestling superstars like Pentagon Jr. and Blue Demon Jr. from Mexico. Uh, also along is so, you know, simply by using the period and punctuating it out, it will it will totally clarify itself in in one very fast additional draft. And uh, because you're naturally taking pauses there wherever a period would go on the page, but to somebody just reading it. They, they'll run out of breath, and they won't necessarily know where to stop. <clears throat> so that, that's my, my main comment there. It's a lot of fun. You got some really good sound bites from, from that guy. What did you guys think of it? That part seemed exciting. What? He said it seemed exciting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the um, sound bites I used for that were um, recorded. I talked to him after the show was over. So most of this was all like post-match um, interview. I have some stuff um, pre-match, but this is all post. Was this about the match or the homecoming of the one player? The homecoming, yes. Yeah. I would have liked to hear more about his emotions, because it felt like it was more about the match. Like I'd like to hear more about him returning to where he came from and how that you know, how the place raised him, kind of? Uh, yeah, I felt some of that was there when he said, it felt good ever since I graduated from here. I've dreamt of coming back here. Wrestling, it's a dream come true to come back. So I had a few other stories, um, but again, trying to, like, I didn't know if I could put them in there to like, but that would be like crowding up space. So I really wasn't sure. It timed out okay as you did. I, I guess it would be, you know, going through your stuff and seeing if if you used what what is the most effective for the story you wanted to tell. Um, again, just an adrenaline rush to come through the crowd. As soon as they announced Jefferson High School alumni, it just felt like a crowd. It was amazing. So you know, I think maybe maybe your your actualities had feeling in them. Um, and maybe you just had to kind of set that up and emphasize it a little more as you set up um, as you as you set up the sound bites. You know, um, like let's look here. Nat sound of talking in the background. Okay, Will wowing the crowd like his hero. Is that is that Will wowing the crowd like his hero? Is that red or? Oh, that was that's just me talking. Oh, okay. I'm saying. Who, who, so is that part? Is that in the Nat sound or? No. Who's oh, that's you. Okay. Oh, that's Shawn Michaels. Okay. I should have made that more. It'll okay. On that a little bit. So I mean, I, I, you know, again, I didn't think about anything. I just did it for this fundraising event for the school. So this, this, you were just telling us that it was a fundraiser for the school, right? Okay, uh, I mean, again, I think, I think you had actualities that were quite, quite exciting and, and full of feeling, but maybe, maybe just setting them up would have, you know, if, if you're going into this like him, with him saying, just an adrenaline rush to come through the crowd as soon as they announced Jefferson High School, you know, if you were, in, in a sense, building this up uh, as, as you were talking, I think that would pay off a little better. I think with some more punctuation and a, and a run through it, and then thinking about how you could maximize the input, the impact of each of these actualities, I think it could be even better. But as it is, it's uh, it, it has a lot of a lot of uh, uh, movement and energy and excitement in it. I could pick that up. Thank you. 
Cool. Other thoughts? No. Okay. Who's up next? Jenny. And then we'll give other folks a chance. I thought I was going after. Uh, you're after Jenny, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't forget you, JP. You're on my list here. Okay, Jenny. someone is misbehaving while well, one person litters a driver speeds in the bay area there's a watchful eye monitoring these misdeeds armed with a camera and strong moral stanley roberts creator and director of people behaving badly excuse me sorry about that combs, combs our streets for misbehavior for his crime for news segment stanley is often deemed a societal crusader or a stitch However, his true identity extends beyond any one episode. KCSS Jenny Shao dives deeper into this. Don't behave badly. Leave a message. So this is his answering machine message. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll get into that. I reached his voicemail. I was late. Upon arrival, I apologized and asked Stanley to start from the beginning. When I was a kid, I always loved playing with cameras. It was a chance to be creative, so I took it to the next level. On that level, I highlighted a difference between videography and video journalism. The video journalist part came by accident. I was a videographer for crime. They decided to switch me. Being the creative mind that I am, I tried to find something different. When I lived in L.A., I worked on an LAPD series, except it wasn't so focused. Now focused on bad behavior, I was curious about his segment's origins. I firmly believe that if you let the smaller things stay, they often grow, like the broken glass theory. If there's broken glass, then people think, oh, nobody cares, so then let's throw some trash, let's rob a house, and it goes from there. Sorry. In showcasing the base broken glass, therein lied his motivation and rise to fame. I tug the nerve of people that wish somebody noticed. It validates their complaints. If it's something good, you'll tell one person. If it's bad, you'll tell a thousand. My job is to show a mirror and say, this is what happens if you do this. Spotlighting ignorant, uh, ignorance irritates the beholder and triggers criticism. Irregardless, Stanley knows who he was. Where the, okay. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one and it usually stinks. You can have your opinion and I can have mine. Off camera, he holds an abundance of other characteristics. I have two daughters, so I love to spend time with my kids. I love to travel, to drive, I love all kinds of music, I love writing, I like to pretend I'm smart. On screen, Stanley shames bad behaviors and people. Off screen, he's an individual, a father, a creative mind, music lover, and humorous, moralistic person like any other. As the saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. I'm Jenny Shaw, reporting for KCSF. Cool. I probably went a lot over. I don't know. What's down here? Okay, there's just some extra uh, stuff there. No, that's just me. I didn't want to completely delete my ideas. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. That was very good. Okay, yes, please go ahead and comment. That was so amazing. <laughs> Um, I actually did a lot of editing, and one of the editing I did, one of the edits I did was I was two and a half hours late. <laughs> oh, I mean, you mentioned that you did show up late. Come on. Did you hear me for that? I, I shamed and tripped myself <laughs> in front of him. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, one thing that I liked is the way that you, you worked that in, you know. It's like, I was late. Upon arrival, I apologize. It's, it's nice that you, you managed to connect the voicemail to you know, a kind of a chronological thing of, OK, here I am. I'm getting to the interview. It's, it's, it was fun. I thought that was fun. More criticism, please. I like, I like your, um, your intro to who Stanley is, but I feel like some of the some of the parts that are interspersed between the actualities are kind of hard to follow what you mean by it. Uh, um, like, it's not as simple as it could be. Right. And irregardless is not a word. 
I had, yeah, I have a question about that. As you notice, I have a lot of dots in between, you know, his, yeah. in, in, his actualities, his statements, because he's saying a lot, and it's long, they're long statements. Certainly, I'm not reversing his order of um, statements or words or whatnot, but I wanted to make it fit into the two approximation of two minutes so is is that bad is that allowed well it just wouldn't work in a real production situation you basically have to take you know the actualities as they come so you couldn't if if every time i see three dots there that's not just a pause but that's like an edit it would be um okay. you know extremely difficult to cut something together like that so usually you're looking more at just picking out complete actualities. This guy sounds like he probably talks in sound bites. I mean, some of some of the cliches or the, you know, the fun stuff that he uses or opinions are like assholes, everyone has one. That kind of thing is, I mean, it probably comes to you in a nice, you know, chunk. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. And, uh, um, yeah, I do think that um, whereas the first paragraph is very well written, uh, as you move in, you, it does run into um, a lot of fragments. This, in showcasing the Bay's broken glass, therein lied his motivation and rise to fame. Uh, you know, it's both too compressed for us to clearly understand it. Um, therein is also not very conversational. There lied is, you know, the incorrect. Uh, it's, it's, it would be there in lay, but even then I would just avoid that. So, you know, you, you might say uh, it all started with a piece, you know, or uh, how could I say, you know, maybe, uh, um, oh gosh, I don't know, his, his uh, um, I don't know, he's a stickler for social order and that might have led to, uh, you know, it might have led him to, or that might have been the motivation for his show, which eventually really caught on. You know, I mean, you would just, you would just want to look at what you were trying to say there and just say it again a couple of times until it came out like you were just telling it to, okay. to Nika or to anybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah? and that, would, that would just really be it. Um, again, spotlighting ignorance irritates the beholder and triggers criticism. You know, I mean, you might just say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to put in the part where I, I asked him questions about when people criticize you, what do they say and how do they, how does it make you feel? So I was really trying to yeah. go against that. Well, I, I mean, again, there's, yeah, I, perhaps you were just trying to, I bet you were actually trying to cut it down to fit into two minutes, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, but I guess in this case, it's condensing your segments or um, is, it leads to them just not, um, being as clear as they could be, and you know, uh, he's he's got such great actualities that uh, it is it is tempting just to use him all the time. But probably what you'd have to do is just focus in on, you know, three or four of his best actualities, and then you paraphrase a lot of the other material. You know, and I think it's a very good question to pose to a, a person whose job it is to be a stickler and point out, you know, criticize other people for their behavior, you know. So the, the, it makes sense. It's just, it's probably just written too tight in order to, to completely read well, you know. Uh, and I like the way you ended it again, which again is, is where you actually just get to take over and say your piece, you know, so that was nice. And uh, great, you know, effort in getting him and, and what a character. <laughs> I like I like his use of I didn't put it in there, but he made up some terms like I discussed with you. Idiot side and right. um, <laughs> just even more stuff that you couldn't put in. One of his things was it's unfortunate that we have to idiot proof our world, but we do. Uh, like the uh, warning labels on hair dryers where you should not go ahead and shower while having it plugged in. Hair dryer on. Some idiot thought that they could, and that's why they got electrocuted. Oh, dear. Well, Jenny, I'd say, you know, this is a really great interview, and uh, as you go ahead, you can dig more into it. But the other thing is for, for a portfolio piece, you know, you write longer and take those constraints off. Everything that was making you, like, kind of, like, crush everything that you wanted to say into a overpacked sentence, you know, let it, let it come out, let it take the time that it does, and 
you know, write this in for a nice portfolio piece, I think that'd be good. It's a good interview. It's a good profile. And it's a person that a lot of people know about in the Bay Area, so it would be good to show to other folks eventually. Can I add to that? That would be a super cool profile for Etcetera Magazine, oh, especially if you brought him here to City College and caught people behaving badly. <laughs> I can see Ash. Yeah. <laughs> Jaywalking. You could sell him on a on an exclusive for etc. Well, I, I did sell a nice him looking magazine. Um, when he did his piece on Balboa Park, I kind of sold him on that one when the semester was starting. So he brought his camera and the BART PD and had a whole bunch of people cited when they were passing through the emergency gates. <laughs> Don't tell anybody my ass can get kicked by All right. <laughs> Jenny, the accomplice. <laughs> Nice. All right, we're going to hear from JP. Do you want to read it? Yeah. All right, good. A street fair highlighted the renewal of a San Francisco neighborhood where JP Mackey elaborates. Carlos Munoz and his baby son Maxwell watch kids in a newly built playground. We want to make sure our kid, our baby, socializes. He sees the environment. He gets to meet new people. You know, experience what it's like to be at a fair. We see our kids get them started early. The launch, a street fair held on September 30th, was the first organized by the San Francisco Shipyard, or the Yard for short. The housing community in Harris Point, developed by Lennar Corporation and Five Point Holdings. Kofi Bonner, the regional president of the Northern California Division of Five Point, states that the fair doesn't just allude to a long city tradition. This inaugural event will celebrate and honor the past, present, and future of the entire neighborhood. Lennar began building new homes in the shipyard in 2013. They will total about 12,000 in a few years and serve more than 200 homeowners. Residents and visitors enjoy this prospect. There are lots of families. We were interested in house design, kitchen design. It's relaxing. You get to kind of distract yourself from your Monday through Friday routine. It, this fair was a weekend getaway. The first few hundred guests earned vouchers for free food and drinks. Lennar provided information as well as tours of homes still under construction. Art vendors vendors line in its court. Music lovers dance to headphones and listen to live performances. But a few guests want to see a certain act. Oops, sorry. Is that it? No, that's not it. No, no, no. What's going on? Page down? Where's my uh, page? Down? Maybe go to right, scroll to right. Scroll to right, let's see. What's happening? Yeah. Oh, oh. There was, a, there was right. an Australian band, band performing. Miami Horror, they're playing in like 13 minutes. Five points states that the fair's purpose is to educate, entertain, educate, inspire, and embrace. And would these visitors attend next year? Yes. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, definitely. From Hunter's Point, J.P. Mackey, KCSF News. Interesting. All right. Very Nice job. All the formatting looks really good. Interesting the way you cut those two back to back. They kind of, they kind of talk to each other. Um, cool. So, I, I mean, it's, uh, I, I know the history of all your efforts to actually talk to the organizers of this event. And, uh, and they're, you know, given what you wrote up here, it, you know, they just seem so unreasonable for not actually talking to you. Um, so, good job. Thank you. So wait, no one from the organization talked to you? No, nope. they sent me a press release. Wow. After a good deal of back and forth, like yeah. JP dealing with a PR guy for ages, PR guy actually even bringing me into it, and, uh, which I, I don't have any problem with that, but I wasn't able to help. And uh, then they were just like, they didn't want to answer JP's questions out of fear of uh, just, I don't know, giving they any. Might get the formula. Formula. What, Nick? They might get the secret formula. I don't know about that. I, I think they were afraid that it would get turned into a story about, you know, gentrification or not. You know, Probably. something like that. I don't well, wasn't know. this event mainly like a PR thing for the new development at that location? Exactly. So that was right. dumb of them. <laughs> you would have thought they'd want you to write it up and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, welcome to journalism. <laughs> yeah, true. Maybe they're hiding gold. They're hiding what? Gold. Oh. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, what we did get out of it is just, you know, a lot of people enjoying themselves, which is nice. Of course. Um, and you did tell us that that was, you know, the launch organized uh, housing community in Hunters Point developed by Lennar. So, you know, the fair doesn't just allude to a long city tradition. I mean, you know, it, it, okay. You're doing what you're doing what you can. What part of this came from the press release? Um, this inaugural event was honored. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Yeah. Past, present, and future of the entire neighborhood. Yeah. So there's stuff about Lennar, yeah. You do what you could. <laughs> I'm sorry they didn't, you know, and you did an excellent job in terms of all the mechanics of it. It's just a shame that they couldn't give you an interview to talk more about, you know, why they did it and what their intentions were. Okay. Um, so first, I'm, I'm very disappointed that a, a company called Five Points only said <coughs> four points when describing the purpose. <laughs> four. <laughs> you only get four out of five. <laughs> um, I was a bit concerned. Uh, confused about the part. It said they're building, it seemed like they're building thousands of homes for only hundreds of homeowners. Yeah, that's, is the part that I'm, that's the part that I'm kind of confused about, though. Is it just per parcel? There's only a couple hundred parcels in the parcels right now. But Maybe there's going like, to be thousands eventually. Is the word thousands there in there? There'll be 12,000 yeah. in a few years and serve Two, more than 200? That that's served 200 homes. That's yeah, a lot of empty homes. Investors. That doesn't make is, any sense, though. <clears throat> it's like a, to me, either. Two to three percent filled. Where is it? No, that's like. <laughs> it, it's right there. No. Six of them, but. This away? Which away? Sorry, you guys. Had, you just had it. It's, oh, it's up there at the Sir, more than two. Yeah, that is that a very total about to be the reason they didn't want it. you to interview them if <laughs> yeah. they're going to sell a lot of houses to real estate developers. I began building new homes. She's going to own total owners. about 12,000. But not like a personal people. Like they're a developer, so it's a homeowner. But they're I think what I meant to say. Maybe the rest of it's rental? Could yeah. that be it? Yeah, but that's what probably I meant to say. That's still owned by somebody. Yeah, but but uh, you wouldn't call a corporation a homeowner, right? It was exactly. just no. Corporations are people too, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, according to our Supreme Court. Did that come from the press release as well? <laughs> they remind you. you know, I, was, I was actually looking up, it up on the website. Oh, okay. Well, that might be something you, you'd be able to clarify. That, that's, that's not your fault. It just sounds really shady. Thousand in a few I years. will follow up on these people. <laughs> well, that's precisely why they didn't want him to ask any questions, I guess. That's a really great way to get more questions asked. Now they put asked. the scent on. <laughs> they put the scent out there now. Yeah. Why yeah, yeah, got 11,000 in the Now we're all to JP. Yeah, that's to JP. But it's tough. It's yeah. tough to get people to talk to you if they, if they don't want to. That's Coming uh, in. It's not, it's not like we can uh, threaten them with, uh, with them not getting their point of view out. Uh, and, oh, Carmen is commenting on something. Carmen, is it, was this about JP's piece? Or no, is I this think the first ones were about um, was Nick, the one she said, that Carmen said down at the bottom. Oh, okay. The good enthusiasm. Okay, not really formatted correctly. Good enthusiasm. All right. So if, we need to if, if anyone would mind uh, moderating yeah, just what online. What does censor and actuality mean? Like the librarian lied to me. Well, you are naked. Oh, yeah. No, no, she, she didn't think it was right. Uh, Jenny. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Everyone's like, you know, everyone, our opinions are like ass. Yeah. So if we need to censor an actuality, do we put that in the script? No, you'd expect the audio to do that. Really Is that like their favorite part of the day? Like, when you get the sensor? <laughs> Automatically, though? Okay, who else wants to go? I'll go. Yeah, Corey and then Shannon. Okay. <laughs> Right. And anyone want to go after Shannon? Sorry, one sec. I have to pull it up on the screen. Oh, you don't? Any, anyone after Shannon? Yes, I can't remember your name. Sorry. Akira. Gotcha. Akira's after Shannon. 
All right. I just submitted mine before class, so. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we can, uh, we'll get it for sure. Assignments. Boom. Uh, radio feature. Not open. Really? Is it already open in the tab? Ah, there we go. Go figure, huh? Speed grader. Where should we do this? Download submission is real. Um, I go through all this. There we go. <coughs> One sec. Let me just bring it down this way. We don't want to do this all the time. Cool. There we go. All right. Gotcha. Anchor. Body slams, leg locks, and elbow drops, and all in the name of charity. Professional wrestlers traveled from near and far to Daly City, California to perform as All Pro Wrestling held their bi-monthly gym war show at Jefferson High School to help raise necessary funds for the school. KCSF's Corey Smith was there to catch the action. And that sound, wrestling bell ring, ding rum. Um, fans started lining up early as they patiently await entry to see their favorite wrestlers take to the ring and inflict some bodily pain on each other. Actuality number one, this fans. Um, I'm here to see the Reno scum. Will Quavez, baby. Yes. Jeff Cobb. I'm a big fan of his. But despite all the pain being produced tonight, APW will be providing some relief to the students of Jefferson High School. One third of the proceeds tonight will go to the school. APW's head promoter, Marcus Mack. We break them off a brick of tickets. They sell them throughout the school and the community. They keep the funds from that. They also keep all concessions, like any concession money that made that was made tonight, water, soda, snacks. That's all going into the pocket of the community. This isn't Mac's first charity show. In fact, back in 2014, while looking to produce his first live event at his head promoter of APW, Mac reached out to the local Bayshore chapter of the Boys and Girls Club. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Where am I now? One sec. Uh, there. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the Boys and Girls Club really opened up the doors for us. At that time, it was so hard to find a place to host professional wrestling. Luckily, the community center said, hey, we can do a fundraiser here. And they were able to raise a few thousand dollars for a community that had absolutely nothing. Now we see, now you see a lot of these kids with new sporting equipment, kids going field trips and stuff like that. Now just because this is a local community fundraiser, don't expect lower tier performers. Some big stars from that formerly performed with World Wrestling Entertainment will be performing here. Uh, Actually, number four, this is the first time in over a decade that Joey Mercury and John Morrison are teaming up together. It's a big deal. While working with the WWE, I had wrestlers like Matt Hardy and Jamie Neville come up to me and talk about this show. So if they're talking about it, we must be doing something right. So next time you hear of Jim Moore's show being put on, come down and check it out. You'll be helping out a local high school, and who knows what big names will be stopping by next. For KCSF, this is Corey Smith. Nice. That one gets the information out there and, uh, in a more conventional way, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, we'd want to see the actualities in sentence case. Okay. Uh, are, you know, that's, it would just yeah, yeah. make it easier to process, right? Um, oh, I have a... Yeah, JP. For, when he said pro wrestling, did he actually say professional or pro? Where, um, what actuality was that? Uh, number three. Oh, you said pro wrestling. Okay. Yeah. And one third in, like, toward the first page. Yeah, the it. one third of the proceeds. I will put that as a word. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. Think said any third okay. instead of the, having the fraction. Yeah, for sure. And did you mean formerly or formally performed with the WWE? Oh, um, because it was in there as formal, but I think you meant former. Yeah, formerly. Or former, yeah. Well, one other nitpick there, I saw an apostrophe used uh, where oh. plural was, uh, uh, I can't find it now, whatever, I'm scanning around, but yes. anyways, okay. something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. it should just have been uh, without an apostrophe to, as a okay. plural kids, yeah, uh, 
Other thoughts on this? I like the structure. It kind of is very easy to comprehend the story. And it tells a story. It's about giving back to the community. And it starts and ends with the wrestling, but the chunk of it in the middle is important. Yes. Remember we talked about how important it is for you to let your audience understand why they should care about the story. So, you know, in this case, being of some benefit to the community uh, or the high school itself, that's, that's uh, you know, <clears throat> justifies the, it, it develops on the newsworthy aspect of it for sure. Just like the homobiles piece that we listened to embedded, you know, quite clearly it, it outlined the problem that, uh, uh, performers have getting a ride and stuff, and, and so it kind of dememonstrates why is this important? You know, so we, this is this is a good thing for sure to develop that angle. Yeah, so it's got a story there, and yes, it does it does uh, you know ease us into the story, give us some context, and then give us you know detail about what's going on. So that's good. You know what's funny though? I just want to say this. This weekend, out at was writing this up, someone, um, another pro wrestler from Bay Area, posted a story from Cron 4, doing pretty much the exact same story <laughs> on a different um, show in Fremont. Interesting. Just, yeah, and I was just like, wow, that's, they beat me to the punch. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I think you, well, should be like, yeah. you should be impressed that you can, you know, uh, get to the sausage factory as in one, in one step, you know what I mean? It's just like, this is news, right? Yeah. Uh, it's like, find, find the narrative, get the event, squeeze it into the shape of the narrative, interview the right people. That's, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so then Sh Shannon was going to go next, and then Akira, right? Okay. Okay. So. Professor Cecil? Yes. What does that sausage factory analogy you just used mean? Uh, that news, making news is like making sausages. You, uh, you have a container and you squeeze the content into it. And they come out one after another after another. Does that make sense? It's, it's sort of a ready-made analogy for any kind of industrial product. But uh, in this case, uh, the news is equated to something tasty and good. OK, Shannon. There we go. Cole Shannon. Boom. I forgot to double space. Darn. Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe, maybe we could settle that would be the comment before you read it. That's all that we'll be interested in. No. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Sometimes it can take a while to find your passion, and one Hayward woman has found hers. Shannon Cole has the story. Ivy Cordova is one busy woman. She's a mother to a young teen. She works full-time in sales and part-time as a sex educator. She attends grad school at USC, and in her remaining time, she's a stand-up comedian. Her interest in comedy started over a decade ago when she took a workshop with her college acting troupe and realized she liked comedy more. But her work has improved since her first trips to the stage. When I first started out, my set was mostly booty call jokes and impressions of my ex. I still have booty call jokes, but they're more well written now. <laughs> Aside from that workshop right out of college, the only formal training Ivy has done was improv classes this summer at Upright, Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in Hollywood. But her education doesn't stop there. Everything else I've been self-taught, writing my material, keeping a notebook with me, going to open mics, going to open mics regularly. She credits that consistency with making improvements to her comedic material, as well as her creative process. It's something that I haven't been that great at in other areas of my life, but with comedy I can really see the difference it makes. She regularly, regularly attends workshops with other comedians where each has five minutes to perform, followed by five minutes of feedback from the room. It's really useful. These are your peers. We all want to be able to do this for the foreseeable future. And we're here geeking out on each other's comedy with people that love this and geek out on it as much as we do. Her hard work paid off earlier this year when she shared the stage at LA's Comedy Store with one of her childhood heroes, comedy icon Margaret Cho. It was a Sunday and no one could come see my set, but my cousin was there and he was supposed to take pictures of me. Only he forgot because he was talking to Margaret Cho across the table. This has been Shannon Cole for KCSF.
Nice. I, uh, I'm going to ask just about a detail, but it's something that impressed me right away, is the way that you play up the fact of consistent, hard work, regular, dedicated. It's in almost every one of your, the things that you say. And I thought that was interesting. I'm sure you did it on purpose. But mm -hmm. Can you talk to that a bit? Um, we did a 45 minute interview last night last at like midnight. Okay. So, um, and this is, this is someone I used to work with and someone that I would consider a friend. So it was kind of hard to direct the conversation back to a, um, the interview questions. But it seemed like the theme that was coming out of everything she was saying is that it's, she feels like her hard work is all finally paying off right now. She's doing gigs in LA and San Francisco, and everything she said related back to how much effort she's been putting in on this. So that was the predominant feeling of the, of the interview. Mm. It wasn't like, let me tell you about when I shared the stage with Margaret Cho. That was, a, that was something that was a benefit of all the hard work, and she was able to recognize that in her own life and yeah. explain it pretty clearly. Yeah, and it's nice to put that as a kind of a culminating event that um you know that uh, uh is also funny it ends it it ends it with a laugh which is good in its way you know i mean because it's it is a humorous piece but you know i'm just noticing it's like she's one busy woman uh and so on you know there's so many places there where you emphasize that that it becomes a theme just in that way so i thought that was nice other comments for shannon Micah? i i really liked each of the parts where you talk because it was incredibly uh, concise. There was really no extra fluff or anything like that. It was all good information. Practice. <laughs> mm. No other comments? It was smooth. I also wanted to put in some pieces of her material, but they're not appropriate. <laughs> like, well, really not appropriate. Here. I also left out in the top um, there's, I left one letter out of one of her quotes because the my set was mostly booty call jokes and impressions of my ex. The rest of that sentence is impressions of my ex's O face. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think it was appropriate. Night radio. Yeah. Night radio. I like it. That's funny. Yeah, I like how you you had like one or two sentences in each paragraph and then actuality. And then each paragraph and actuality. It felt I felt it was consistent as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean the other thing is that the sentences are are, you know, they they tie together the actualities in in, uh, in coherent ways too, which is nice. Yeah. Cool. Other comments? All right, we'll go to Akira. Do you want to read yours? Yeah, I'll read it. Gotcha. Okay. Led by a top HIV prevention veteran, the University of California, San Francisco's community-based research department has launched a pre-exposure prophylactic study named Triumph for transgender people. KGO's Akira has the story. PrEP is a daily pill that prevents HIV. The brand name of the pill is called Trivada and is one of the medications that is used to treat the virus. However, the medication was also found to be effective at preventing it. Project director of UCSF PrEP study, Luis Gutierrez Mox, has dedicated most of his professional career to launching similar studies that help the transgender community. I began working in HIV prevention and trans health in 2000. Luis also trains students and service providers by offering technical support to transgender serving agencies across the world. PrEP has been around since 2012. It's a very important, it's, it's very important to implement this study with transgender people who are at a very high risk for HIV. This study further, further validates the efficacy of the drug as well as providing transgender people with an additional HIV preventive option. To get a PrEP prescription, a person should first talk to their primary care physician. Trivada may impact a person's kidney, so before starting PrEP, people need to have a, a cryotin test to, to assess whether the patient's kidneys are appropriate for the treatment. <coughs> also, an HIV, uh, the hepatitis B and HIV test is required. If the HIV test is negative, the client is prescribed PrEP. 
Subjects in the triumph study are linked to our peer navigator who monitors blood specimens and assess the client's risk factors. PrEP monitoring occurs every three months through an HIV test and a cryotin test. Recipients are encouraged to report any high-risk activity and document their journey during their participation in the study. This is the Kira Jackson reporting for Kikio. All right, I'll go quickly with just a couple of things, but and then we'll like like to hear what everyone else says. So I, I think that um, uh, there was one little place where one of the one of the uh, uh, actualities here, this one, that should have gone down the sentence. Um, but the other thing I, I would have said is that for broadcast, you may want to just introduce Luis Gutierrez Mock first, and then immediately after we meet him, then hit us with what PrEP is, I think. And I would, I, I, to me, that's really the difference between print and broadcast, is broadcast, if you've got the personality, Start with a personality and then kind of zoom it out to, um, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't go far in this story without knowing what PrEP is. And it's absolutely essential, you tell us. But I, I just felt that, you know, to meet Luis Gutierrez, we could do that, Mock, we could do that right away and then hear about what PrEP is. And then towards the end, I just felt it was getting uh, a little technical heavy. Um, for the average listener, but it, it all depends on, you know, who your audience is here, you know, because it's obviously important information. And I guess give us a pronouncer for creatinine or however we should say it, you know. So and that's those are my little notes, but what did you guys think? I liked how easily it explained a complicated medical thing. Damn right. That's not, that's not easy. Um, and one of your actualities, it says that it was the runtime on it was 10 minutes, which I think is just a typo. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, oh, there it is, yeah. Unless, I mean, mm. he could have been at a really yeah. slow pace. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I really, I also really like how sensitive it is to the issue. And it, it, a lot of the times when you read mainstream stuff about AIDS, it can be kind of demonizing. And there's nothing demonizing about this. There's nothing dehumanizing about it. It's just a treatment for a thing. I like that. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? I would say for PrEP, keep it all capital. It's not all capital. Not all capital. Yeah. Yeah. Or like in, like in your, um, your, the reporter <coughs> speaking, I would probably keep it all capital. Like just to move. That's how the acronym is, because the, mm. the R is small in PrEP. Yeah. And I think yeah. if you're if you're part of the community that knows about PrEP, you know that. But to the average person just looking at it right now, it does look wrong. Mm. Pre-exposure prophylaxis. So that was part of explaining what it was. But I would continue to write it that way myself, too. Oh. Yeah. Other thoughts? I mean, it's it's great that we hear about the the minutia, but it's also great to acknowledge you guys are doing some stories about important stuff. You know, yeah. It's good. It's good to hear it. Who else? We have uh, time for one more story. Who else? Come on, jump in there. One more story. You read it, and we don't comment. No. <laughs> no. How about that? Stare at you. <laughs> no, we all get up and leave. If you are opinion. Because it's 245. <laughs> we'll just go. Uh, all right, so that's it. We'll all get up and leave four minutes early. Thank you for those. Those are awesome. So, well, before we get up and leave, remember the exam is next class. So the exam will be open online during the time that we... It's on we, Thursday? Uh, yes, it's on Thursday, right. It's next class. So it'll be open online during the regular class time. Uh, or and how many people, again, want to come in and write it here? I saw one, two, three, four, five. I'll print out like ten copies. Okay, good. And if it doesn't work for you during class on Thursday, email me and we'll establish another way that you can write.